Hi everyone, welcome to my video. I'm just going over the new spline design tool and how I've been using the tool to create these 3D waving flags or curtain.js type effects. Um, and I want to show you how I build those and how you can apply this effect in a few different scenes and use cases. So let's get into it. So heading into the desktop now, um, this is the spine.design website. This is a brand new tool that's came out and it's made for creating more simplified 3D experiences and making it really web friendly and also really new user friendly. Um, so this is the spline website. They do have a online web builder, um, but what I've gone ahead and done is just hit download up here and installed the Windows version. So we'll open that up and you can see I've already been doing a lot of experiments and different projects, but today we'll just start with a new file and we'll give it a minute to load. It does take quite a while to load these new scenes, especially when you start building a lot of extra content in there. Um, so I just want to go ahead and start off by creating a plane. So if you click and hold over this plus button up here, you can choose different objects and scroll. You get the full list. I'm going to go ahead and select a plane here. Um, now the controls here, I don't know if you've used apps like Illustrator or Photoshop, it should be quite familiar actually. It's designed to bring in those 2D designers. Um, so you can actually press Alt like on uh, Illustrator and that will center around where you dragged from with your mouse uh, and you can press shift to constrain that but I want to go for something like this and it doesn't really matter we can always rescale it and actually we'll need to to match whatever image we want to make a flag out of um, so I'm just going to release that one oh. there we go looks like I was getting a bit of a keyboard bug there but Nevertheless, we've got our plane in place um, and I'm also going to go ahead and make a camera quickly. And that's just so we can keep everything aligned. So I like having my rotation position zeroed out and my plane as well. And it means that I can scroll around here, go to my perspective view and I'm holding alt to rotate around here um, and middle mouse to pan. Um, and it just means I can work in whatever angle I want and then come back to that fixed view um, and your camera selection will always stay on the top right here. Um, so the next step I want to do is bring in an image we want to make our flag. So I'm going to drag in a um, screenshot from one of my animated short films um, and you'll see it comes in as a plane itself but usually when you're dragging in an image it comes with really random uh, position values. Not really sure what affects that, but we can just go delete that because now we've loaded that texture into spline. And then if we come down to our material settings here, we'll be able to add a new image and select our image here. I'm just gonna put that below the lighting. The lighting in your materials um, needs to be on top otherwise it doesn't have any effect and I'm just going to adjust the size in this parameter here till it looks about right for the image so I'll just show you for reference this is the width of the image um, so I've got the pixels basically in place there and I could if I wanted to um, go pull up the resolution and make sure the ratio and everything is correct but I'm not going to um, bother with that today. So the next step we need to do is add a movement um, or a displacement rather. So we're going to add in a displacement layer and chuck that underneath the lighting um, and then just scale this value up until we see something happening. So you can see we've got a bit of movement here, um, but it looks like I'm losing a little bit of definition there. I can see that when I pan on the side these are quite jagged edges. Um, so what I just need to do is up the sides value here. So I'm going to do something like we're about twice as wide as we are tall. So I'm going to do 32 by 16 
and we just want to do something like that to keep it in check so now I've got much more resolution on that displacement um, what I might do is actually reduce that value a bit and I'll, I'll show you the sort of values I usually use and you can already see the flag kind of starting to take effect um, but usually I will use this Ashima displacement I just find it's a bit of a softer displacement um, and doesn't come with as many harsh sort of points um, and I'll drop the scale a little bit as well and what that's going to do is make that displacement um, it's funny dropping the scale almost makes it seem bigger like I'm scaling closer so instead of having lots of little sharp displacements I've got a much larger one across that whole material um, and then I'll just fine tune these values until I get the sort of look I want so I might drop that scale even a little bit more and it really depends what sort of flag you want to go for um, but just going between the displacement and the scale values here until you get the sort of look that you like which I'm pretty happy with that um, and that's pretty much the gist of it so now all we need to do is make that flag move so what I'm going to do is start off by creating a new state um, and states are super powerful in spline I've seen a lot of tutorials online where states are being used to uh, for example move an object so if I move this back and then we go between those states you can see it's switching between and then we can animate between those two I'm just gonna reset that but what I haven't seen a lot of is people using states to actually affect the materials especially this displacement um, so what you can do if I go back to our base state now so I have these two they're currently identical and I set this one to zero movement and then I go forward and set this one to let's see let's say that looks about right 11.3 um, and then I'm going to create an event and I'm gonna have that event be triggered on start and what I want that to do is just step from one state to another um, and the time I'm gonna say about three seconds and then we'll hit play on spline and just show you how that looks so I'm not getting a whole lot of movement there and I believe that's because my camera is a perspective uh, was on ice uh, orthographic down here or an isometric style camera so I'm gonna have a look again and now we're getting that movement um, so with an isometric camera the actual distance between things is flattened so it gives you that more interesting perspective um, but to actually see the flag waving we need to be in perspective so we can judge that depth um, so you can see that happens once and then it stops not super interesting it looks a bit too fast so we just need to dial in these values and it really depends what you're going for so um, if I wanted to, this to be a banner for example on a website um, then I might want that to continue basically forever so if someone's opening that website they're going to be on that home page for 30 seconds I want it to keep going um, so what I might do in that case is actually do a really long animation so let's say about a hundred seconds um, and let's make it linear and let's choose um, it to repeat and cycle um, and rewind so that basically means it's gonna go all the way from base to 100 over a hundred seconds and then come back to the base state um, and you'll notice if I do make this a small value like back to three how we had before you do notice a bit of a stutter or slow down it looks a bit funny when it reverses it's quite clear um, so you can see it happening here so that's why I usually tend to go for a much longer animation time um, and I find that that doesn't have any sort of performance impact um, 
if I'm having this run on a website, there's completely no overhead with having a longer animation versus a shorter one. Um, but what that does mean is now if we press play and it's 100, obviously it's moving super slowly. So we just need to up that rate by going to our second state and our displace and chucking that up to also probably about, let's see what 70 looks like to start. Mm, so 70 is too low as well. And it's really just dialing that in to look right because these values will be different depending on the actual size of your shape and um, the speed that you're after. Okay, so that's looking good to me. The actual value we ended up going for is quite high at 400, um, but I like the speed and we're getting that slow waviness. Um, now I've done a few demos of this so you can see how powerful it is. So for example, we might want this to appear when we hover over an object. So let's just bring in a cube as an example and we'll draw it over here and we'll make it blue and I might make this white and what we're going to do is put our plane inside a group so just control G that'll put it in a group and we've got this parent null now um, so let's call it plane parent and this one I'm also going to create state. So this time I actually want the state, so the second state we're going to move to, to be one. So I'm just going to enter one so it picks up that this is the thing I want to change and go back to the base state and make that all zero. There we go. And then I will add to my new cube here a state, oh, not a state, an event. Um, and instead of doing a start event, I'm just going to do a mouse hover and I'm going to say when we mouse hover over this cube, we want to change the plane parent to go from base state to state and let's choose spring. Um, and this is just the sort of animation type and speed that we want to go for. So if I hit play, Obviously we can't see our plane because it's at zero and uh, if we hover over this it pops up uh, and then if we hover out it disappears. Alright so I've set up a bit of a scene here with just some more interesting lighting. Um, so I've got a warmer coloured light, I've made my plane glossy and I've added a light that follows the cursor. Um, so you can see you can start to create some really interesting sort of looks and especially if you want to go for a bit more of an alternative um, style for your website you can do some quite interesting stuff so what I might do now is just show you a few different examples of how I've applied this flag waving effect um, in a few different scenes As you can see, uh, as I mentioned at the start, it takes quite a while for your scenes to load up, but there we go, finally loaded in, and I'm gonna go over to my camera. Um, so this is a portfolio concept I've been working on, um, and this could totally work um, for your folio, but what you need to keep in mind is that with Spline, the 3D objects get quite large. Um, so unless you're using sort of built-in shapes or maybe just some um, paths from Illustrator, you're going to have quite a long load time. So um, what I decided is to go with a different sort of folio, which you can check out if you follow the link below. Um, but this is one concept that I hope as internet, and especially in Australia, gets a bit faster, um, I could move to at some point. So. Similar to the previous setup, I've got this plane in the background that's just very subtle poking out of the fog and moving to give a bit of interest in the center of this dashboard here. And I've got this hand as a cursor, which I think is quite fun. Um, but as you hover over an object, you can see I've got a state triggering on the object. So it pops up to the front. Um, and I've got the flag showing with some text. So this is giving a little preview of one of my projects, Bscapes. 
um, but you can see a few similar ones. So here's one for ABC Kids Bot Shop. Here's one for the door in question. Um, so you can start to build a bit of a, a language with these. All right, into another demo here. So this one was actually a bit of a, um, a game, kind of a game, a uh, bit of fun experimentation, seeing how the interactions work in uh, Spline. But what I've got is this sort of effect using a circular plane. Um, and it's also got a noise which is moving. So same way as we use the displacement and animated that movements property. I've also got a noise with the exact same thing um, and the displacement going as well. And it's kind of to show this uh, almost banana ripening effect. It's a bit of a playful demo. Um, and then if we hover over the fruit in this demo, it kind of enlarges and, and ripens. So that's just using a state on each one of those fruits and then triggering that state on hover over the bowl. Um, and then I've also got these other bananas that are ripening around. Um, so this is all using sort of the state-based animation system and animating some different properties of the materials. So now our banana has also ripened. And here's another example. So this one I actually just made today based on um, an Instagram post I saw of one of the spline creators. So basically using the same thing, but on a 3D um, circle. So like a, sorry, a sphere, a 3D circle. Um, so this is a sphere here and um, you can see I've got a displacement and I'm just stepping between two displacement states but instead of doing it slowly over like a hundred seconds I've gone with a spring that has a delay um, and that basically is a, a two second delay so it's gonna go one state wait two seconds go back um, but because of that delay and the spring it's actually quite satisfying I think um, and th this material was created using just a noise a 3d gradient which gives it this sort of uh, ombre like pink and orange color um, and i've also got a light in this scene all right well thank you everyone i hope you learned something today about using the displacement and the state-based animation system in spline to create these interesting flags and how you can use that in a few different other settings as well um, but yeah thanks for watching the video and I hope you guys can show me what you make in Spline as well. Thank you.